I believe the Lord has been so good to you and your family. As we listen to the voice of the Lord this morning as he speaks to us, may the Lord continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Just invite your friends as we study the word of God together this morning. Shall we pray? Loving and faithful God, we thank you for another privilege to come before your presence. We glorify your name, O Lord, for having been with us all through the week. Thank you for this moment. We ask, O Lord God Almighty, that you speak to us. Holy Spirit, grant us understanding and revelation and insight into the word of the Lord this morning. Open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word. Take away every stony heart. Give your people a heart of flesh. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, O Lord our God. Let the entrance of your word this morning bring transformation, bring change, O Lord. Let it bring healing, deliverances. Let yokes be broken and burdens be lifted. Thank you, mighty and everlasting Father. At the end of it all, only you alone shall be glorified and adored. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jewel chapter 3 verse 14. The book of Jewel chapter 3 will read verse 14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Our topic this morning says, little decisions that changes situations. Little decisions that changes situations. What is the meaning of decision? Decision means a choice that you make about something after thinking about it. The choice that you make about something after thinking about it. The result of deciding. That is what decision means. Every day in our lives, we are faced with decisions to make. Decisions you take or you make in life can make you. Decisions you take can also mar you. So your decisions can make you or mar you. So don't take any decision when you are angry. Don't take any decision when you are angry. Don't take any decision when you are confused. You come to a point you are confused, don't take a decision at that point of confusion. Let's see what the Bible said in Jeremiah. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. He said, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient past. Ask where the good way is and walk in it. And you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not walk in it. The Bible says here, yeah, when you come to a crossroad, when you come to a point that you are confused, you don't know whether to go left or to go right. The Bible says, stand. Stand and what do you do? Ask for the ancient past and ask for the good way. He said, Then walk therein. So, whenever you are confused, never you take any decision at that time. Just wait, listen, ask, and the Lord will direct you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Important decisions that you need to make in life. Let's look at some of the important decisions you need to make in life. Number one, who you will serve. Who you will serve is the first decision one needs to make in life. Let's see Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24. We'll read from verse 14 to 15. He said, now fear the Lord and serve him with faithfulness. Throw away the gods your forefathers worshipped beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your forefathers served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. 
But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. This was the comment that Joshua made. He called the people of Israel and he told them, today is a day of decision. Today you must make a choice to serve the Lord or to serve idols. But he told them, as for me and my family, we have decided to serve the Lord. That is the first decision you need to make in life. Who you will serve. Are you going to decide to serve the Lord? Or Satan? Or have you already made, taken a stand? But that is one of the important decisions one must make in life. To serve the Lord or to serve the devil. You cannot be in between. You cannot be here and there. You must take a stand. Are you for God? Are you against God? So Joshua told the Israelites, Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. Sisters and brothers, who are you serving? Are you serving God? Or are you serving Satan? Or are you still one leg in and one leg out? You must take a stand. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 3. If you're not hot, if you're not cold, God will spill you out of his mouth. He wants you to take a stand. Either you are for God or you're for Satan. There is no middle ground. So that is one of the important decisions you must take in life. Who to serve? Number two decision is your career. Your career. Your job or your profession is another decision you have to take in life. And any mistake you make in your career will affect you generally. Because if you are in a career or in a profession that you don't like, that is not God's will for your life, you will, not, you will not have the job satisfaction. You will not have job satisfaction in that job. You will just be there managing. And some people are like that. They have found themselves in a job or profession that they don't like. They know that this is not just the, the, the area of their calling. They know that they just don't like that job. But they are just managing until they retire. And then by the time you retire, you want to begin what you know God had ordained for you right from the time you were born. Don't make any mistake in the choice of your career. Don't make any mistake if you want to enjoy your profession. Make sure that you are in a career or profession that God has ordained for you. That is where you will have the ultimate joy. That is where you will have the fullness of joy. Outside of that, you will be making a very big mistake. So number one, decision who to serve. When you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior, your career, your profession... It's another area you need to take a decision following the leading and direction of the Lord as we'll be seeing later. Number three, location. is another decision you have to take in life. Where do I live? Where will I be located? Where will I go and where will I not go? Where you should be at a point in time and where you should not be. It's a, a choice that you have to make. Because where you are located is where your allocation is. If you are located outside the will of God and plan and purposes of God for your life, you will not have the joy, you will not have the peace. Your allocation won't be there. You will only be struggling and striving. But when you are located where God wants you to be, you will thrive in that environment. Number four, your life partner. Your life partner is another decision. Who to marry? Who are you going to marry? Who will be your life partner? Is another important decision one must take in life. If you marry the wrong person, you make a mistake, you marry the long, wrong person, oh, your marriage will be like hell on earth. But if you make the right choice and marry the person that is God's perfect will for your life, your marriage will be like heaven on earth. That is true. That is the truth. Because any mistake you make in marriage will not affect only you, it will affect your children. 
It will affect every other person around you. That is why you have to make sure that you follow the leading and direction of the Lord in order to make the right choice. Because when you make the right choice of a life partner, I assure you, you will enjoy your marriage. Praise the Lord. Number five decision, the fifth decision you need to make in life when you're married is how many children you want to have. You have to decide with your husband. Let's see Psalm 127 verse 4 and 5. Psalm 127 verse 4 and 5. He said, like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons born in one suit. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies at the gate. Praise the Lord. So, you carry the quiver that is your own size. The one you'll be able to carry because quivers have different sizes. So you be you carry the one you'll be able to carry. You deliver the number of children you'll be able to cater for. So that is very, very important. It's a decision you need to take in life. How many children am I able to cater? How are we going to deliver? Are we going to have? So that's a decision you need also to make in life. Number six decision you need to make in life is to succeed or to fail in life. It's a choice. It's a choice. You must decide no matter what you will succeed in life. You can also decide that you don't want to succeed. If you have made the decision to succeed, if you have made the decision to excel in life, then you must be diligent. If you don't plan or decide to succeed, you're planning to fail. So you must take a decision that I want to succeed in life. No matter what, I will succeed. And then you walk towards it. Let's see what Proverbs 22 verse 29 says. Proverbs 22 29. Proverbs 22 29 says, Do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve before kings. He will not serve before, before obscure men. I think King James puts it this way. See a man diligent in his work. He will stand before kings and not before men. men. So you must be diligent. If you need to succeed in life, you must be diligent. And also you need the favor of God. You need the favor of God for you to succeed in life. But you must take a decision that you will succeed. And you keep declaring it and you keep walking towards it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number seven, choice of friends. Choice of friends. This is very, very important. Your friends can make you, your friends can mar you. Your friends can either make you or mar you. So it's a choice, a decision you need to take in life. And it's good that you make the right friends. Make the right friends. When you make the right kind of friends, they will help you in life. They will help to make you. But when you choose the wrong friends in life, they will mar you. I remember the story of a boy that wanted to join a, a, a group of boys. And when he went to join that group, they asked him, have you uh, 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 slept with a, a, a woman before? The young boy said, no. That he has never. They told him that if you want to join this group, you must sleep with a woman. The boy foolishly went out, bristled himself with alcohol, and then went to a prostitute, picked a girl from a party, and went and slept with the girl. By the time he came back and told them that he had slept with a woman, they said, how many women have you slept with? He said, only one. He said, no. If you want to join this group, you want to join this gang, you must sleep with more than one woman. He foolishly went out again and slept with a woman. Unfortunately for him, he caught HIV and chlamydia and ruined his life because of the group of friends he wants to join. So it's a choice. It's a decision you must make in life. 
And I pray that the Lord will help you to choose the right kind of friend. The right kind of friends that will help to make you be that which God has ordained for you to be. Praise God. Hallelujah. Number eight decision you need to take in life is to be joyful. Nobody got your joy. Nobody is holding your joy. It's a decision that you have to make. That you want to live a happy and a joyful life. It's a decision you have to take. If you want to live a, 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 sad, a, a, a life of sadness. It is a decision, sister. Nobody has your joy. You've got to decide. I want to be happy. I want to be joyful. Happiness comes from happiness, but joy comes from the Lord. And the Bible said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's in Christ Jesus that you have the fullness of joy. Money cannot give you the fullness of joy. Women and wine cannot give you the fullness of joy. The fullness of joy is only found in Christ Jesus. He is the only one that will give you the fullness of joy. And so today, if you have not yet made Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, an opportunity will be given to you because it's only in him that you will have fullness of joy. So it's also a decision that you can decide whether to be happy or not. You want to be joyful, you have to be intentional about it. You have, just have to be intentional. If not, if you're waiting for that your friend, or that your neighbor, or that your colleague in, 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 in here, or even your children to make you happy, you'll be missing it. You have to be intentional. No matter what happens, I must be joyful. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You have to make up your mind to be joyful. Let's see examples in the Bible of people that took little decisions that changed their situation. People in the scriptures that took little decisions that changed their situation. Let's look at the life of a woman called Ruth in the Bible. Ruth, can you turn with me to Ruth chapter 1? We'll quickly read from verse 1. Ruth chapter 1 from verse 1. In the days when judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in a country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Euphrates from Bethlehem in Judah. And they went to live in they went to Moab and lived there. Let's break there for a moment. Elimelech was a Bethlehemite. Bethlehem means house of bread. But at a point in time, there was no bread in the house of bread. There was no bread in Bethlehem. There was famine. And so Elimelech decided without consulting God. Without seeking the face of God to know whether God wants him to leave Bethlehem at such a, a, a at that point in time, he decided on his own and left the house of bread and went to a gentile nation to live. Are you where God wants you to be? That movement you want to make right now, have you asked the Lord whether He is in support of it? That location you want to change now, have you asked God whether he is in support of it? Or you are just deciding on your own you want to relocate? Have you asked the Lord, is it God's will? Elimelech carried his family to Moab without seeking the face of the Lord. Without asking God whether it is his will. Praise the Lord. And so... The Bible said in verse 3, Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she left, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Opa, and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Kilion also died. And Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. Have you seen the calamity that befell Naomi? Because of a wrong decision that they took. A wrong decision taken by the husband to leave, go to Moab to live. 
And while they were there, the Bible said, Elimelech died. His two sons, Malon and Kilion, also died in that land. When you are outside the will of God for your life, you will be open to satanic manipulation. They were outside the will of God. And so the enemy had an opening to strike. Are you at the center of God's will for your life? Let's continue. Verse 6. When she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, Naomi and her daughters-in-law prepared to return from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. So at this point in time, when Naomi has lost her husband, has lost her two sons, she was only left with her two daughters-in-law. This was when she now realized that they made a mistake. This was when she realized they had been outside the will of God. When she now heard that bread has come back in the house of bread, she decided to go back. But by that time, she has lost both the husband and the two sons. But thank God she took another decision. I must go back. She decided to go back. She decided to go back to the will of God for, his, uh, for her life. And then the Bible said in verse 8, Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you. To your mother's house, may the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown to your, your head and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them and they wept aloud and said to her, We will go, we will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons? Who will become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there would be still there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave back to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It is more bitter for me than for you. Because the Lord's hand has gone out against me. Have you seen? Naomi told the daughters-in-law to go. But look at how he has, she has passed the blame to God. She has passed the blame to God. The mistake that she and her husband made. She told them that they should go. That God's hand was against him. Against her. May the Lord help us. Most of the times when we make a mistake, instead of accepting and taking responsibility, we pass the blame to some other person. That was what happened in the Garden of Eden. When Eve collected that fruit and ate and gave it to Adam, God, when God came to the garden and asked, Adam, why did you eat the apple? He said, it's not me. It's the wife that you gave to me. He passed the blame. He didn't accept responsibility. When God asked Eve, why did you eat of the fruit? He passed the blame to the serpent. Serpent. He said it's the serpent. Nobody accepted to take responsibility. That was exactly what happened to Naomi. Let's continue. Verse 14. At, the, at this, they wept again. And Opa kissed her mother-in-law goodbye. But Ruth clung to her. Look. Said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. I want you to take note of that. Opa was now faced with a decision she needs to make. Opa, decide to go back to your people, your gods, your idols. Don't go with me. She decided after she has wept. After she had said, no, I will follow you. But Naomi insisted, Opa decided to go back to her people and to go back to her gods, idols. She decided to go back to idol worship. But the Bible said that Ruth 
clung to her mother-in-law. And I want us to take note that immediately, Opa decided to leave Naomi and go back to her idols and her people. Her name was not mentioned again in the Bible. There's no place you will see the name of Opa mentioned in the Bible again. Immediately, she separated from Naomi. But look at the decision of Ruth in verse 16. Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me. Be it ever so severely. If anything but death suppress you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, he stopped urging her. Can you see that? Ruth decided, my mother-in-law, I will follow you. Naomi, I am going where you are going. Your God, the God of Israel that I have tested and seen that he is good, will be my God. I am not going to go away from you, my mother-in-law. I will follow you because I have seen that you are serving a true God. You are serving a living God. Your God is faithful. I have decided. I've made up my mind. Don't pressurize me to go back. That was the confession and the consecration of Ruth unto her mother-in-law. And they continued with the journey. Decision. Decision making. She took the right decision. But Opa made the wrong choice. She decided to go back. But Naomi clung to her mother-in-law. And we know, sorry, Ruth clung to her mother-in-law, Naomi. And we know from the scriptures, as they went back to Bethlehem, we know that God gave Ruth a future. And the name of Ruth is written in the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because she made the right choice. Because she took this little, made this little decision that changed her situation. She made that little decision, and today her name is in the records of the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Choice. Choice. The decision we make in life is very, very important. Number two, let's look at the life of Joseph. Joseph is another person that took a decision in his life. When he was living in his father's house, the Bible made us to know that he will always bring evil reports to his father concerning the wrong things, the wrong behavior of his brothers. Joseph decided, I will not join my brothers in doing wrong. I will not join my brothers in doing the wrong thing. He decided. And so whenever they finish misbehaving, he will go and report to his father. Look at what my brothers did today. Look at what they did when we went out. And then God loved Joseph. And his father Jacob also loved him. And God gave Joseph dreams. He came and told his brothers his dream. They hated him. They hated him with perfect hatred to the point that they decided to sell him when his father sent him to go and give them food in the desert. They caught him and sold him to the Ishmaelites. And they thought, let's see how that dream will come to pass. When they sold him to the Ishmaelites, the Ishmaelites sold Joseph to Potiphar. To Potiphar. And in Potiphar's house, Joseph also was confronted by Potiphar's wife. Another time of decision. Another time for Joseph to take another decision. To please the Lord or to, to displease the Lord. Potiphar's wife enticed her and Lord enticed him and Lord him to come to bed with him. But he took the right decision. He asked that woman, how can I do this wicked thing against God and against my master? He knew that even though his master was not there, that God that is seated in the heavens of heaven was there watching him. And thank God that Joseph took the right decision not to defile himself 
We know the story well. He was accused and sent to prison. The devil felt, oh, I have finished him. Let me see how his dream will come to pass. But right there in prison, Joseph was still fulfilling purpose. He was still fulfilling purpose. The word that gave him in charge of some of the prisoners to take care of. And finally, we know the story. One day, Pharaoh had a dream. At God's appointed time to lift Joseph, nothing could hinder his Upliftment. Even when the, the, the cup bearer refused or forgot him to mention him before Pharaoh, God knew how to lift him. And at that appointed time, in the morning he was a prisoner. In the afternoon he was brought before Pharaoh. And he interpreted Pharaoh's dream. And before you know it, Joseph became the prime minister in a foreign nation. A cash exchequer. Why? Because he took the right decision all the way. Remember when, I, when we started, I told us that every day we are faced with issues that will warrant our taking decision. In that to please God or to displease him. Joseph took the right decision all the way. And no wonder God honored him. Whenever you stand on the Lord's side and take decision to please him. He will never fail you. He will never disappoint you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at the life of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible told us when Daniel and the other Israelites were taken to exile in the land of Babylon, when they got to Babylon, Men, the king said they should select some men who are wise, who are well built, who are intelligent, who will serve in his cause. They selected Daniel among the others. And they were to be given food, served from the king's table. And that food had already been sacrificed to idol. And when Daniel had that, he told them that he has resolved that he will not defy himself with the king's meat. He took a decision. Right from onset, he took a decision. I will not defy myself. Even though I have found myself in a hidden nation, I will remain faithful to the Lord. And we know that was the beginning. Eventually, they gave him vegetables. He ate and he looked more robust and uh, well built like the others. They entered into the king's court because he became 10 times wiser than his contemporaries. He, he was among those that were selected. And at a point in time in Daniel chapter 6, a decree was passed. Another time to take a decision. A decree was passed that nobody should serve any other god in the next 30 days except the king. We know that that was a conspiracy against Daniel. Because the other administrators and satraps were jealous of Daniel. They had hatred and they decided to conspire against him. When Daniel had that rule or that law was passed, he heard it. The Bible said he went to his house and opened his windows towards Jerusalem. And three times a day, he called on the name of the Lord as was his usual way of life. He has always been doing that. He took a decision. I'm not going to bow down to any other God except the God that is seated in the heavens of heaven. And so they came, his accusers he, uh, came and saw him. And then they went and reported to the king. Oh, king, Daniel has disobeyed your law. He's serving other gods. He doesn't want to uh, bow down to the king. And the king was grieved because he loved Daniel. It ate his heart. The Bible says that he sought ways to see as if he, how he can protect Daniel. But the sister said, ah, King, remember, you have already signed it with your signet ring. And nothing that is signed with the signet ring can ever be revoked according to the law of Babylon and Persia. The king had no option. He asked them to take Daniel and to throw him into the lion's den. But that night, hallelujah, the king could not sleep. A hidden king could not eat, he could not sleep. He was restless because a righteous man was cast into the lion's den. 
And so he was restless throughout that night. Very early in the morning, he ran to the mouth of the den and shouted, Daniel, servant of the living God, did your God, whom you serve continually, able to save you? Daniel shouted from the den of lion, Yes, O king, the Lord whom I serve continually sent his angels and they shut the mouth of the lions. The king was so happy and he asked them to bring out Daniel. Little decisions that changes situations. That decision that Daniel took in Babylon, I must honor God in this foreign land. I must bring God glory in this foreign land. That little decision he took. That little decision I am not going to bow down to any other person except to the Most High God. God delivered Daniel. His situation was changed. King now declared there is no other God that will be served except the God of Daniel. And the Bible made us to know that Daniel was uplifted. Little decisions that change situations. That was the life of Daniel. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30, 11 to 20, we see the story about David. When David went to war, the, the Philistine uh, uh, king asked him to come and join them to go to war against the Israelites. And along the way, he was sent back with his men because other Philistine uh, 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 commanders said that David might likely fight against them in order to win the favor of uh, King Saul. So he was sent back with his men. But by the time they got to Ziklag, Ziklag had been burnt down by their enemies. Their wives, their children has been taken. And so the Bible said that the men wanted to stone David to death because they cried that they had no strength again to cry. But the Bible said that David found strength in the Lord his God. That is not where I'm going. After that, he asked Abieta to bring him a void. Let them inquire from the Lord. God told them, pursue, succeed, pursue, overtake, and recover all. And so, having heard from God, they decided to go. On their way, let's now read from verse 11. On their way to pursue their enemies, what happened? In 1 Samuel chapter 30 from verse 11, the Bible said, They found an Egyptian in a field and brought him to David. They, brought, they saw this servant in the field as they were pursuing their enemy. The man was weak. He was there lying. He was very sick. And they found him and brought him to David. Remember, they were pursuing their enemies. They had, David could have decided, just kill him, do away with him, let's continue in our pursuit. But look at what David did. They gave him water to drink and food to eat. Part of the cake of the press figs and two cakes of resin. He ate and was revived, for he had not taken any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. David asked him, to whom do you belong and where do you come from? He said, I am an Egyptian. The slave of an Amalekite. My master abandoned me when I became sick three days ago. Now, this was an Egyptian slave. They were part of the group that went and burned Ziglag. But as they were going, he became sick and his master abandoned him. And he was there. And David and his men met him. David could have decided to kill him. But he didn't. Little decisions that change situations. He didn't. He rather gave him food to eat. And the man was revived. And it was this man, this slave, that told them where their enemies were. He was the person that now led David and his men to the Amalekites, where they were eating and dining, enjoying their plunder. And David and his men now dealt with them and then took their wives and their children and their plunder. Little decisions that changes situation. I don't know 
the decision the Lord will want you to take today. But I want to tell you that if you make a decision to stand on the Lord's side, you will never regret it. It reminds me about a story. Somebody told, I will not mention the name, I'm sure some of you already know the story. So he said that when he was in school, he saw this boy from a very humble family, a very poor family. The boy's parents, you know, in a boarding school, now government college school, you live in the boarding house. The boy's parents didn't have the money to send him to the boarding house. And so this boy will come with a camp bed. When uh, 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 the others have gone to bed, he will bring up, pull out his camp bed, and with that he will sleep. And this brother was a, the hostel prefect. And so he saw the boy. He didn't confront the boy. He just decided to help the boy. As a prefect, they will give him big loaf. He will share it and give to the boy. He will eat. And he was sharing his things like that with the boy until they graduated and left the school. They lost contact. When this other brother that was helping him now went to university, in the university, he came to a 40-year level and there was no money to continue. Things were so hard. He came to a point that it was almost his quitting from school because he couldn't pay his fees. He didn't have money to eat and all that. What God can do. You know what happened? He ran. This uh, boy he helped when he was in secondary school. Started looking for him. Started looking for him. And they told him that look at the school where he is. He went to the other campus, was looking for him. He was not there. Somebody now directed him that he's in the College of Medicine. He now went there. That day he couldn't go for his clinicals. He was weak, hungry. Somebody knocked at the door. To cut the long story short, he opened, the young man came in, and they were happy seeing each other. The young man came and said, why is your face like this? He finally opened up and told the young man, doesn't have money to continue and all that. The man, the, that boy he helped in secondary school was the person that gave him money, which he used to round up his studies. And after he graduated, he paid him back the money. Little decisions that changes situations. That little cup of tea you're giving to somebody, you don't know how God will bring it back. Little decisions that changes situations. May God help us to take such decisions this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. What about name and time will not permit, permit me? Neman, a, a, a servant girl, a slave girl in her house, told the mistress, why don't my master go to Israel and we have a prophet there who will heal him of his leprosy. Eventually, Neman went to Israel. And when Elisha told him to go and take a bath in the river in Israel, he started complaining. Why will he tell me to go there? The river in my country, they are better than this. His servants told him, oh God, this is just a little thing this man of God asked you to do. Why don't you do it and be free? Little decisions that changes situations. He now decided, went and dipped himself seven times in, in the river and his leprosy left him. Little decisions that change the situation. Time will not permit me. There are so many of them. What about blind Bartimaeus? That last time Jesus was passing through Jericho. Blind Bartimaeus didn't want to miss it. He heard that it was Jesus. He started shouting, Jesus, son of the living God. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Even when others were telling him to keep quiet. He made up his mind. Today is my day of miracle. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The Lord said, call him. Those people that were telling him to keep quiet, we are also the same people that say, come, the master is calling you. Never you be discouraged by what people are telling you. If blind Bartimaeus has accepted their discouragement, he wouldn't have received his healing. Don't accept any discouragement. 
Hold on tight to God. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstance, hold on tight to God. Your miracle is on your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Blind Bartimaeus did not accept their discouragement. He persevered. And when Jesus called, he said, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Master, I want to see. I want to receive my sight. And blind Bartimaeus received his sight. Why? Because he decided, I will not give up. I must keep calling on Jesus until my answer comes. Rabba Sondoria Handaria. He kept calling on Jesus. Son of David, have mercy on me until his miracle came. Never you give up. I don't know what, who and who is trying to discourage you. But never you give up. Keep on holding on. Your miracle is on the way. Don't give up. You've gone too far to give up. You've gone too far to go back. You've gone too far. Don't give up. Keep on holding on. Your miracle is there with you. What about the Canaanite woman? She persevered. She persisted until her daughter was made whole. Let's Use the last example, Zacchaeus, in Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10. In Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10, the Bible told us about a rich man, a tax collector called Zacchaeus. He decided when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he was a short man, the Bible told us. But the Bible told us that when he heard about Jesus, he ran ahead and went to a sycamore tree. He found a sycamore tree and he climbed the sycamore tree. Can you imagine a rich man? Can you imagine a rich man in your country and the person heard that Jesus is coming and he's running, climbing a tree? That is decision. He took the decision. Even if people are laughing at me, even if people are laughing at me that I am short, and I'm rich. How dare a rich man climb a tree? Because I know what I want. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I am ready to climb that sycamore tree. He climbed the sycamore tree. And Jesus was coming. When Jesus came to that sycamore tree, he stopped. Because a man took a decision. That morning he decided I must meet with Jesus. I want to see Jesus. He climbed that sycamore tree. And Jesus came there and stopped and told him, Zacchaeus, come down. I must go to your house today. Zacchaeus came down, was happy to meet with Jesus. He took Jesus to his house. People were grumbling. Look at Jesus. He's going to a sinner's house to eat. Jesus told them, I came for the sinners now. And it is the sick people that look for a doctor. I came to save the sinners. He went to Zacchaeus' house. Zacchaeus repented. Zacchaeus restituted. Hallelujah. Zacchaeus repented and he restituted. Amen. And Jesus saved him. Little decisions that change changes situations. I want to end with a testimony this morning. There's this sister. She had a very tight friend. And when they were in secondary school, she was always moving with this, her friend. One day, she heard that, was, that there was a man who was, used to be a medical doctor, but he resigned and joined full-time ministry. And so she decided with her friend that let them come and see what is happening. That they heard that people go there, they are, they are saved, they are delivered. They let them go and see what is happening there. Both of them came. They heard the word of God. One of them took a decision to make a U-turn for Jesus. The other friend of hers decided not to take a decision for Jesus. And then after the program, the girl was saved. She was committed, going, coming, you know, going for the program, was growing in her faith. Her friend, 
Her best friend that she, she said that she used to do everything with that friend. Anything that friend does, she would do it. That was how tight they were. But at that point in time, she took a decision for Jesus. And then that friend left her. By the time after some time, she came back one day from school and saw that somebody, as she was passing, calling her. She was looking at the person. The person was looking so dried up. And he said, no, who is this? She looked closely and that was that her friend. That her tight friend in secondary school that they used to do things together, move together. Her tight friend, she was surprised. How come she's so lean, so haggard? She now got to know that she, the girl had HIV. And unfortunately, passed on to eternity. She said, wow, if she had continued in that way of life, that would have been how she would have ended many years ago. But thank God that today she's doing well. Let me not be very nice that you don't know the person I'm talking about. That girl is doing very well because she took a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. She took a decision to stand for the Lord, but her friend decided the other way around. David Livingstone also has such a friend. Back in the days when they were in school, David Livingstone had a classmate. How do I know? The day David Livingstone died, according to the story, this classmate of David Livingstone, they came crying, crying. Uh -uh, people were surprised. Uh -uh, why is this man crying like this? Somebody approached him and said, are you a brother to David Livingstone? He said, no. Why are you crying like this? He said he's crying because David Livingstone used to be his classmate. Far back in school, David Livingstone decided to follow Jesus. He was a physician and uh, a missionary. So he decided in their secondary school to follow Jesus. This other classmate didn't. And the religious stone, you know, studied, became a physician, he became a missionary also, and he was well known. And so the man said, he decided for the Lord, but I didn't. Look at today in his burial. Look at presidents. Look at governors. Look at the caliber of people that came for his burial, those he has impacted their lives. But look at him, that he's just a drunkard, drinking and falling into the gutter, that David Livingstone was living, but he was only existing. That's a very important comment that man made. David Livingstone was living, but he was only existing. Brethren, are you living? Or are you just insisting? Little decisions that changes situations. Shall we pray? Malebo Santaraba, glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God, I bow before your throne. Worship at your feet, bow before your throne. You are a glorious God, bow before your throne. Worship at your feet, bow before your throne. You are a glorious God. Time has not permitted us to round up this topic. We will take the part two of this topic on Monday. But let's stop here because of time. I want you to talk to the Lord. Little decisions that change the situation. Little decisions that change the situation. We have looked at decisions one needs to take in life. Have you made the right decision in your life? 
Or have you at any point in time found out that you made the wrong decision? And today you want to ask the Lord for mercy. And today you want to ask the Lord for forgiveness. And today you want to decide, Oh Lord, I have made up my mind today to make a U-turn for Jesus. To surrender my life to him. You need to take that is the first decision you must take in life. Who to serve? Who to serve? Can you open your mouth and talk to the Lord? Open your mouth and respond to the Lord this morning. Tell the Lord to help you. Every day we are faced with decisions to make. Every day there are pressures. Things that want to pressurize you to decide against God. You need to ask the Lord for grace. That's why on a daily basis as we come before the Lord, we need to ask God for grace every morning. Father, today is another day. Give me the grace to take the right decision today. I want you to open your mouth and respond to the Lord. I know God has ministered one thing or the other to you this morning. Can you respond unto him? Can you respond to the Lord this morning? Mali mazande rebo shenderia handaria. Raba sonto robo shikanderi mazunto riaba. Eri makande rebo zenderi makandaria. Raba kondo robo shekenderi masanta. Rama sonto robo shenderi nakanda. We will not pray for long today because our time is far gone. But I want you to talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord to give you the grace to all Always take the right decision at the right time, at the right place, at the right time. Oh, Mali Baba Lava Sanderevo Shantarababa. Every Mazando Robo Shekendere Masuntori Ababa. Maruba Sanderevo Shender in Akanda. Father, we are asking, oh Lord our God, that you help your people, Lord. Help us to always take the right decision at the right time and at the right place. In the mighty name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Rima Kanderevo Shenderia. Every Mose Kenderebo Sentaraba Suntori Ababa. Rakanderebo Senderi Masantori Ababa. Rakandere bo shentara baba, every mazandere bo shenteri nakanda, e malaba sandoro bo shenteri bo skenderia, raba kondori nakanda rama. Tell the Lord to give you the grace to always take the right decision at the right time at the right place. Tell the Lord to help you on a daily basis as you are confronted with issues to decide upon. Tell the Lord to give you the grace to always to take the right decision in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you a student? You can ask the Lord to grant you direction as to the profession he wants you to take because you will be faced at one point or the other on the need for you to take a career to decide on which career on which profession. Therefore, as a student, I want you to pray. Oh Lord, give me wisdom. The particular area you want me to focus. Next week, we'll be looking at the things that will help you to make the right decisions in life. We are go you're going to pray. Oh Lord, help me. Are you there? You're still looking, waiting upon God for your own life partner. I want you to pray. Lord, give me the grace, oh Lord, to make the right choice. Give me the grace, oh Lord, to follow your leading and your direction. May I never make any mistake in marriage. I want you to pray that prayer. If you're not yet Get married, pray that prayer. Tell the Lord to help you never to make any mistake in marriage because any mistake you make in marriage will not only affect you, it will affect the children, it will affect the people around you. Therefore, I want you to pray. Father, give me the grace never to make any mistake even in the choice of a life partner. Can you open your mouth and pray that prayer? If you make any mistake in marriage, I tell you, you your marriage will be like hell on earth. But that is not the plan of God for your life. The plan of you, God for your life is that you make the right choice. You know the person that is God's perfect will for your life and when you marry that person, God will give you the grace to build an ideal Christian home and your marriage will be like heaven here on earth. Can you open your mouth and pray, oh Lord, give me the wisdom, oh Lord to take the right decision, oh King of glory, even in the area of a life partner. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. Rama zundo rima kanderia. Rima sonto rima zandere bo si kalababa. Lord, we are praying, oh God, for as many as are married, oh God. As many as are single brothers and single sisters oh lord who are now faced with this 
uh, choice, O oh Lord, of choosing a life partner. Lord, we pray for them this morning, O oh God. We we'll pray for wisdom and direction, Lord, to make the right choice, Lord, that they will follow your leading, that they will follow your direction, Lord, that you will lead them, O oh God, to their rightful partners. In the name of my Lord Jesus Christ, Marebo Sintari Nakanda, Rabba Sukotoro Moshe Teri Nakanda, Emma Zuntoro Moshe Terebo Sikala Masanta. You may be facing the the, the, the the decision to take uh, to choose your friends. I want you to pray, Lord, give to give you wisdom to make the right kind of friends. That God will give you the wisdom to choose the friends that will help to make you and not those that will mind you. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. It could be your face with uh, 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 to make a decision concerning the business you enter into. I want you to pray that God will direct you to take the right decision as the particular business God wants you to enter into. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Depend on the Lord and ask him for wisdom. Whatever decision you need to make, whatever situation that is confronting you now that you need to take a decision, I want you to ask God for wisdom. I want you to ask the Lord for direction so that you know make a wrong choice. Are you now as a single man or woman or a married couple and you are taking, want to take a decision on where to locate? I want you to pray about it. Ask the Lord to give you wisdom and direction where he wants you to be located. Are you there? You're looking for admission and you want God to direct you also even to the school that you're going to uh, seek admission into? I want you to pray about it. Tell it to God in prayer. Whatever it may be, I want you to talk to God. Are you sick? You need healing? Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Whatever is your need, just present those needs at the feet of the Master this morning. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. He will be here to meet you. He is here to meet you at the point of your need. Where Wherever you are, distance is not a barrier to him. Open your mouth and make your request. Open your mouth and make your request. Malebo senderebo shandarababa. Rikanderebo senderi masantori makandaria. Marubo shekenderi masanta. Thank you, mighty and everlasting Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We want to give an opportunity to as many as want to take the most important decision in life. And that is the decision of who to serve. Who to serve? Probably you have not yet met Jesus. You are still serving other gods. You are still serving man-made gods. You are still serving yourself. Or your beauty. Or your wealth. But today, you want to make up your mind. That you will serve Jesus. You want to make up your mind. You want to take this decision. This all important decision that one must take in life. You want to take that decision to serve the Lord. I'll give you, I want you to open your mouth. Ask God for mercy. Ask the Lord to forgive you of all your sins. Ask the Lord to forgive you in all the ways you've gone on your own willful way. Tell the Lord to show you mercy as that the blood of Jesus Christ shall cleanse you, as that the blood of Jesus shall sanctify you, as Jesus to forgive you of all your sin, as Jesus to come into your life to be your Lord and your personal Savior, or probably you have taken this decision many years ago, but along the line because of uh, pressures of the world, you went back to the world and today you want to be restored back to him, you have seen that he's the only one that will help you in line, that will lead you that will direct and order your steps and today you want to rededicate your life to Christ. I also want you to join this ones. Ask the Lord for mercy. Ask Jesus to forgive you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you say this prayer after me? If you have made up your mind to take this decision to give your life to Jesus Christ, can you say this prayer with me? Or you want to rededicate your life to Christ? Can you say this prayer with me? My God and my Father, I thank you for loving me. I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for my sin. I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I thank you for sending Jesus. Today, I declare to the visible and invisible that only Jesus Christ is my Lord 
and my personal savior. I have no other God except him. Lord Jesus, take my life. Let it be consecrated unto you in the name of Jesus. Give me the power to live a victorious Christian life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I did this so many years ago and I have not regretted it. I assure you, you will not regret this decision to serve the Lord. I will pray for you now. Can you close your eyes wherever you are? My God and my Father, I thank you, O oh Lord, for as many as have made all this important decision, O oh God, to surrender their life to Jesus Christ. Father, I pray this morning for them wherever they are, O oh God, distance is not a barrier to you. And I also pray for those that will be listening to this message later and they commit their life to Jesus. Father, forgive them of all their sins. Cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Give them the power to live for you, O oh God. Uphold them with your mighty arm of righteousness. Give them the grace to stand firm for you, rooted and built up in Christ Jesus. Cancel their names from the book of death. Transfer their names to the book of life that is in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my God and my Father. Uphold them and keep them standing firm till the very end in the name of Jesus. Father, we also thank you, O oh God, for as many as have listened, O oh God, to this message this morning and those that will be listening later. Lord, I pray, O oh King of glory, as many, O oh God, are about to take a decision as per their career or their life partner or location or whatever decision, O oh Lord my God, they are being confronted with in their workplaces, in their business centers. Lord, I pray that you release your wisdom, O oh God. Release Release your wisdom upon them, my God and my Father. Rele release your wisdom, the right application of knowledge. Release it unto them, O oh God, that they will take the right decision at the right place and at the right time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for as many as are singles that are believing you for a life partner. Lord, as they take all this important decision in their life, O oh God, I pray that you will direct them. May they never make a wrong choice of a life partner. May they never make any mistake. Oh God, in the choice of their life partner, help them to follow your leading and your direction, oh Lord, as to the person, oh God, that you have ordained for them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, faithful and dependable God. We pray for missionaries this morning, oh God, wherever the missionaries are, oh God, reach out unto them, my God and my Father. Meet them at the point of their knees. Are there those that are at the verge of discouragement? Lord, strengthen them and encourage them, oh God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Heal the sick, oh Lord. Bind the brokenhearted. Bring unity upon homes, Lord God Almighty. Lord God Almighty, we pray for our nation, Lord. Let the peace of God reign in the nations of the earth, oh Lord. Father, we ask, oh Lord, in righteousness, establish the nations of the earth in the name of Jesus. Thank you for what you are doing. We are believing you, oh God, for total eradication of this COVID-19 in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Father in heaven, we will not forget to remember women, oh God, whose delivery date is this month. Lord, grant them safe delivery. As many as are in labor this morning, oh God, grant them safe delivery. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We worship your majesty, oh Lord our God. We give you praise. We give you thanks. Have your way, Lord God Almighty, in the lives of our church leaders, oh God. Give them wisdom to always make the right decision at the right time and at the right place. Thank you, my God and my Father. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. Christ. For the church of Jesus Christ is marching forward in the name of Jesus. In this season, oh God, where, oh God, the lockdown of our churches have been lifted. We pray that your glory shall be made manifest, oh God, in the different congregations, oh Lord, and churches, oh Lord. Let the glory of God be made manifest, Lord. Let there be tangible manifestation of your presence and your power. Oh Lord, confirm your word always, oh God, with signs and wonders following. Thank you, my God and my Father. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We honor you for there's no God like you. Hallowed be your name, O God. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you for joining us in today's program. Monday by 11 a.m. by God's grace, if Jesus starts, we'll be here to handle the part two of this topic. God bless you. We love you. But Jesus loves you most. 
have a beautiful weekend.